And here we go once more. Welcome, friends and foes, to Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a 5th edition D&D homebrew campaign in which stalwart adventurers have now for, well, if, if you don't count the break in between, uh, then for either in real time, about six years now, or in game time, uh, possibly about a thousand years, uh, we have been uh, tromping through the world of Omatia. Uh, my name is Mark. I am the GM and host and the one whose world-building obsessions got a little out of control. And uh, I named 55 islands and named every town on every isle. I was looking at the maps today and I realized my maps aren't even up to date to what I had figured out. There's one, there's two islands which don't have their, their town names on them and now I have to go back and and fix that. But that's that's my problem, not yours. Uh, I have, I am joined by my players starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat and I am playing Silas Marsh, uh, cultist of the mother. Hi, uh, my name is Marie and I play uh, Annie or Annalise to some. Um, she is a rogue fighter who may or may not be not supposed to be here, probably. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric, who now has access to level six spells, or at least, well, once I fill this out. <laughs> and uh, I'd be curious to see which ones you end up end up using. There's, nice thing about about clerics and druids is you do have a huge toy box to choose from to play with. The bad thing is now you got to choose from this huge toy Decisions? box. Decisions? What? You, you can't carry them all with you, sadly. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. Well, Last time we had uh, returned back to the material plane after a foray through three different planar spaces. Uh, the first one being uh, a semi near plane, or at least nearer from a from a perspective of where you could get to it. Uh, some sort of chunk of the earthen plane uh, surrounded by void. Uh, where you had met up with another uh, familiar face, Tauzek Riva, the beholder with a bow tie, who has his own plans for summoning uh, uh, his his uh, benefactor, I guess you might say, uh, hinted at that he was not always a beholder, in fact, but was granted this status from his, uh, his devotion to Omicron. From there, you travel through that way station, what turned out to be an ancient way station of the, the plane hopping Argenti Segex to an interim plane on the plane of Earth. Really didn't seem to be much more than a tunnel, although under sieged by uh, large flying worms. They seemed to be ones that could pierce realms, perhaps, not dissimilar to ones you had met before, not entirely that far away from Tauzek Riva as well. From there, a strange gateway uh, that daunted you for a while till you're able to figure out the message that the Argente Segex had left behind. And finally, to a, a realm on the edge of far space or far realms uh, where greedy and hungry ancient nameless beings chewed away at the reality trying to escape from the far realms on which you were on the edge. There you met an ancient Argente Sagex uh, person, Valenti. Not really sure how ancient, because they had no real way of measuring time, since they were stored or captured or transformed into a spiritual being in a tube for a long time. While under siege once more, you were able to uh, solve the, the numerous technical conundrums which had held back Valenti's transformation into what was referred to by Pat in the notes as Valentibot, uh, <laughs> the, the newly embodied form. Uh, from there you fled um, through another realm, uh, a realm which, while somewhat eerie, at least offered peace or no direct attack, Hildago Ereldoi Musqua, otherwise known as, or Musea, sorry, as the Museum of Dead Giants, to give you some sense of what the Argenti Sagax were up to, they collected many forms of giant across the realms and had brought them to this space to study them. The skulls of giants had been sitting on one side, as well as discovery that the entirety itself was in the skull of a titan, a massive being of unknown force. 
that want to challenge the gods for dominance. At least on Omatia, it appears that the gods were the winners of the dominance. Now, having uh, learned a lot more about how portals might be made, given that you have some concerns about uh, retrieving some of your friends and or goddesses from other realms, uh, you were transported back to the material plane and emerged in the uh, sewer tunnels beneath uh, Aelthvater, the ancient tunnels where you had seen before a broken symbol, which turns out to have been some sort of end point um, for the uh, Argenti Sagax, a target, if you will, of one of their portals. Now you find that two weeks have passed, although it hasn't seemed like two weeks for you, only barely a week, I think, at this point. I think you've slept three or four times. Uh, maybe not even that much, to, to be honest. The time, I think we only slept twice, Max. <laughs> uh, probably, you may have only slept in the last realm, actually. I'm trying to remember if you took any rests along the way. Sounds like our No, end. we didn't. We didn't take any rests. Yeah, so you were well worn out by that point. But time is a strange concept oh, when wow. moving between realms, and occasionally it is messed up. In this case, two weeks had passed in Omatia, and a few days you had spent elsewhere. One thing you were also on the watch for, um, with the pendant you're wearing especially, and with some foreknowledge, you were on the watch for nexus crystals. Or, as they were also described, breaks and pieces of the crystal domes which surround each realm. They could be used to help um, construct these uh, interplanar nexuses or interplanar portals, which again is of interest to you, as you have friends trapped in what the players know as the shadow. Um, wasn't given a real name, I think, too much in all of this. Uh, as well as potentially uh, another ally lost somewhere in the Astral Sea. And of course, beyond the Far Realms, where Zagwatha waits for her children to come retrieve her. Uh, and you saw these crystals, but were unable to grasp them as you passed through in that instant between the realms. Now you find yourselves returned. Peace seems to be... Um, uh, the dominant feature across Aelthvater. No further attacks have happened in the two weeks. In fact, if anything, things have been relatively calm. Um, but you'll find out how calm when you dig below the surface, perhaps. Now, the characters have all leveled up. This will be level 11 total for everyone. I think uh, both Silas and Annie are multi-classed, I think, at this point. Yes. Uh, whereas uh, Medric is once more pursuing the the uh, line of the Kamar, I believe, the <laughs> theory warrior priests of Ignis. So, what I have promised you is four weeks of downtime. Opportunities to spend some of the resources you've already acquired or get some new ones, find out some more things that are going on, or whatnot. Um, some of you have some construction plans potentially to deal with. There are a couple of things that will happen throughout the time as well. I'll be inserting those as we go through. So we may have a few scenes as you kind of deal with that. And you're also welcome, of course, to gather together anytime during those three weeks um, to, uh, or sorry, four weeks. I just removed a week. That's my mistake. Uh, anytime during those four weeks to discuss what's going on. Check in with one another, see where the plans are, and see what goes forward. We'll do this one week at a time. So if you do have something that's going to take multiple weeks, we'll handle one week at a time. You can We can always come back to those. Um, now, this is using my downtime rules I developed quite a while ago and then promptly shelved for a while and then realized this isn't half bad, so let's try this again. Uh, these are abstract rules for how, how you handle downtime. I've also abstracted out of this uh, money as a, just a particular kind of resource. Generally, you're dealing with small, medium, and large as quantities. There is a very large, but it's not really enumerated on the chart because you shouldn't be getting that far at the moment. You were all given some additional resources as well. Um, so make sure you note those. We have, uh, let's see, uh, 
two medium and five small resources. You can keep those as abstract at the moment of whatever kind you want, as well as three small money resources. So, so just you said three small money and what else? Three small money, uh, two medium resources, and five small resources. And I'll run through the basic idea here uh, of how these work. So during your downtime, it operates in weeks. You choose to pursue a particular activity during that week. Uh, each activity requires a stake, which is some sort of cost. Sometimes there is no stake. Just going to work doesn't cost you anything. They produce some sort of outcome, uh, possibly a base outcome, possibly a variable outcome, depending on how well or how badly you do. The outcome may, uh, may ha involve a certain amount of risk, which is if you fail, you lose that. But it might also produce outcomes which are either more resources or complications. Um, that's the, the highest level point of view. We won't go through all the details of individual things, but uh, our individual resources or complications unless they come up. So in general, spending resources doing things. If it requires a role, you make a role. Depending on the outcome of the role, you may get the same, more, or some complication that goes along. It is possible that you might have a failed role, still get a, an outcome, because it's a guaranteed base outcome, and some sort of complication that goes along with it. So the idea is these are little inspirational mini structures for a little story. So I'll encourage you as you're going through these and uh, interpreting the outcomes We'll work together to try to figure out what it actually means in the context of what's going on. So I'll run through the activity list. My list has 22 things on my list. Most of them are not going to be of, of importance. And the 22nd one is simply other, which is if there's something I haven't thought of, we can do that. Um, as we go through, you can note down which ones are of particular interest to you. And we'll go through. I'm not going to go through the details of each one unless we have uh, someone doing it. First one is working. Simple labor for money. Now, I will, let me, let me go step back one step here just to say what the resources are. That you can both gain or spend. These resources include money, as I've mentioned. The most basic and easy to understand resource. Contacts. People who can do things for you and who can be called called upon to do things. They may be useful for giving you introductions or giving you favors or things like that. Favors themselves are people you've impressed enough that they owe you or they're willing to do something for you. The difference is they're not going to do it themselves. <laughs> they're going to uh, do something on your behalf perhaps, but they're not going to be there to do it. Trading favors is a very political thing, for example information. Now, we can abstract the information as in you go and study and you get a certain amount of information resource. And we can determine exactly what that is when you need it. Uh, you can also trade away information. Information is a little bit weird because when you trade it away, you still kind of have it. You just don't have it as an information you can trade anymore. So we'll determine what it is. It might be, for example, you do research on the history of the area. Well, that history it just no area, longer has a value to, to use. Right. You're basically, give, once you've given it away, you assume everybody has it essentially at that point. So it doesn't have value in that sense, but it is information. And sometimes that can be directly used for, to fuel certain features. As I mentioned, money. Rumors. Rumors are easier to get, but less reliable. They're like information, but uh, you're not really sure if the veracity is entirely uh, there, if there's something minor which might be wrong about it, or it might be wrong entirely. They don't get tested until later. Uh, and again, like information, when you spend it, you're essentially letting go of the rumor that other people know. And the last resource essentially is special. This is really one you're earning to do something for you. For example, there's a recovery special resource, which allows you to overcome levels of exhaustion or injury. There's renown, which is a more special one, which is a reputation. Um... For example, if you have a renown of a certain level, it will give you a bonus. You can use that renown without spending it to, uh, to give you a bonus on a particular action. If you do spend your renown, you're essentially 
uh, letting everybody know that while that may have been true, uh, it, is, uh, it is a stepping stone that is no longer of exciting interest. But you can hold on to it and use it as a, as a skill bonus, essentially. There's also things like having gotten well-rested. If you're well-rested, then you will actually get a bonus on rolls for a week, uh, usable once per day. Uh, that's if you take the, uh, take the recovery action or the rest action, uh, or activity, I should say. Items, uh, including magical items, formulas to create items, materials you might gather, all these things fall under that sort of special resource. Um, usually special resources can only be uh, spent on particular activities, uh, and usually they are, they are completely spent when you use them in that activity. So, um, there is the opportunity also to invest in an activity. I should have mentioned that earlier. Essentially, you pay a certain cost to do an activity. Say, for example, working happens to have no cost. But if you're willing to pay favors or contacts or maybe rumors or information, you might get a better job. So it makes the, the, uh, the likelihood of a better outcome increased. Now, these have not been extensively road tested, so we will likely, uh, actually, I can almost guarantee you, we'll run into some circumstances that don't quite line up. Uh, we'll handle those, uh, you know, by being human and interpreting things. Uh, but I'll make note of them and try to improve them for later. So, back to the activity list. Working, labor for money. Networking, going out and meeting people. This is where you're trying to find more contacts. Or maybe you're looking for some rumors or you're trying to, uh, trying to insinuate something. Carousing, going out and finding information or rumors from people. By the time you found the information or people, the people aren't interesting anymore. That's why you don't generally get uh, contacts from carousing. Research, reading books, conducting experiments, talking with sages, consulting experts, maybe even uh, doing some, uh, some experiments yourself. Generally, costs favors. You need to know somebody who has that information, or it might be money. You're just simply paying for research, or maybe contacts, the people you know, uh, not trading favors. Small risk, but you might get some, uh, some renown out of something like that. Snooping, sneaking around to gather information. Uh, this one uh, might very well be, uh, you know, the rogue's solution to research. Why should yeah, I look but it up myself? I got burned. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true too. Uh, why look up something when I can? Uh, I can look up what someone else has already looked up. Essentially, training. If you're looking to learn a new skill, a tool, or a language, you can go through training. Um, you can increase the training by spending more resources. Essentially. Uh, tutoring, training someone else. This is great if you have, for example, followers, and you want those followers to be better at something in particular, because tutoring teaches groups, whereas training is just teaching yourself. It also can gain a little bit of renown, or possibly even contacts, and maybe even rumors. You can decide that while you were training this particular elf, they were talking, telling you all about their life uh, and uh, all the different secret things they know. Religious service. So you can be a cleric for a week. That's uh, doing weddings, bar mitzvahs, and funerals. That is, uh, you know, giving all the blessings to the fishermen and in the, in the people in the fields, as well as possibly bigger things, dedications, uh, or so forth. You don't earn a lot from that, but you do get more renown out of something like that. And it risks nothing to do that. Political service, hobnobbing and deal-making with the halls of power brokers and business people. This is also another way to get contacts, specifically because you are trying to uh, gain re reputation. You're trying to find uh, who knows what and where the power points are. Gambling, risky behavior with risky people to gain potentially a lot of coin or possibly get a great reputation Hopefully not a great reputation for spending a lot of money in bad ways. Relaxing. Uh, this is the easiest activity. It costs nothing but gets you something. Usually you're looking to do relaxation because you want to get rid of some other problem you have. It might be, for example, uh, having gotten injured, which is another possible outcome, a complication that can happen. Uh, or it might be the way that you would gain well-rested. If you do that for the entire period, uh, you can gain well-rested. That gives you bonuses for a week on certain activities. 
Some of these bonuses stack as well. So if you ever find yourself with nothing to do, you can relax. And relaxing will get you uh, a time, uh, a better time later on. If you have magic items you want to, go, want to get rid of, you can always take the selling a magic item one. This is looking for some profit from the spoils of your adventure. Uh, rather than letting things pile up in a bag somewhere, you can actually sell them and get, well, money especially. But maybe you might be selling it for a little less money and getting a great reputation or someone who owes you a favor because they really like the thing you made. Crafting an item, there's both crafting an item and crafting a magic item. Crafting an item, as you might expect, is easier. It's a non-magical item. Crafting a magic item is much harder. It takes a lot longer to do. But it is possible if you have some, some uh, skills and resources to spend on it. Speaking of resources, harvesting is going out looking for raw materials, whatever it might be. For example, while it will be difficult, you could try potentially to harvest Nexus crystals. You do know there have been numerous breaches across the city, especially breaches coming from wherever Melora is being held. There may be the magical remnants of Nexus crystals there. After all, those invasions were not neat or tidy. They were um, piercings of the crystal surrounding your area. Or it might be something as simple as you need a certain amount of herbs or some, uh, some ores if you're building uh, some sort of metallic item, for example. Long-term construction is something that's going to take a little bit longer than a week to build. Uh, we'll figure out exactly how long it is, but typically you've got small, medium, or large. Everything is kind of gauged in that. A small construction is something that would typically take a couple of weeks. Uh, so you could think of probably a small house would make, take a couple of weeks, provided you are also proficient in carpentry. Uh, four weeks for medium items. This might be building a manor house probably need to have some resources along with that. I should say that you can also employ the uses of your NPCs and they can give you assistance so long as they have whatever skill you're looking for. So that'll give you advantage, but they will be booked up for the week. They have the same um, schedule, if you will, for sim simplicity. And six weeks for a large object or a large, sorry, a large place. I believe the temple was on the large size, for example. Uh, beyond that, we have to work on, say, it costs too large or a large and a medium to work out the rough numbers it might cost. Uh, pit fighting and mercenary work. There is no fighting pit in this particular town. You could always start one. Uh, but there are also always calls for mercenaries. Um, that might be a bunch of people are needed to guard a caravan through a dangerous area. You could also choose to attack caravans in dangerous areas, but that would very likely risk your renown going down, or uh, renown you can actually have multiple copies of. So you can actually have a positive renown and a negative renown. You apply the positive renown, I apply the negative renown. So maybe the word got out that uh, El Diablo in the fighting mask was actually Medric trying to get a little <laughs> coin on the side. <laughs> you can buy magic items. There are a limited number of sellers of magic items, but there are caravans coming through all the time. Basically, this represents the search for a magic item. You still have to pay the full cost, and you have to know somebody to uh, to be able to get access to it. Uh, but if you are looking for something in particular, let it, let me know. We'll work out what the cost and difficulty with that would be. If you have a business, you can spend your entire time working in that business it's a pretty low risk one because you already have the business hopefully in, in place uh, and it gets you a certain amount of money or possibly uh, other things like rumors and information. Maybe you run a bar. And the purpose of the bar is not to make any money. It's to find out what's going on. Uh, if you have a rival, so one of, the, con one of the, the complications that can occur in all this stuff is you can end up getting a rival, someone who is doing something that conflicts with what you're doing. Now, this could be a rival in business. You have a business, they have a rival business, and now it's battle of the businesses. Uh, but you can confront them. Maybe it is you make peace with them. Maybe it is you burn their stall to the ground. We can determine what the exact consequence of that or what the exact effort is and what the risk is when you decide to do something like that. And finally, uh, 
beside the other one. There's also converting resources. If you have resources and there's nothing in particular you want to do with them, we can look at having some sort of uh, direct conversion. A lot of these events, uh, a lot of these activities are already kind of converting resources. For example, many of them convert favors into money or they convert uh, information into contacts or so forth. Uh, but we can get into more detail about those a little bit later on. So, who wants to start? Who has their first week of activities they'd like to do? Sure. Uh, Silas is just starting construction uh, okay. on the mansion with the uh, attached uh, temple to the mother. Okay. When you, say, to the mother. when you say mansion, how big a mansion uh, are we talking? Stone house. Stone house. So that sounds like a it's medium. Gonna be, it, yeah, it's going to be a medium. Okay. So that's a four-week activity. Um, cost is also going to be medium. Uh, now, the way that construction works is every week you work on the construction, you pay into that construction. Um, the first week you pay the full amount. And then every week afterwards, you play, pay one level lower. So the first week, you pay a medium amount of, of uh, cost. Every week afterwards, the ongoing cost will only be small. Um, now, you can make, you can improve the, the outcome potentially by spending additional money. Or if you have contacts, favor, or especially special materials, you can invest those in this process. Um, I don't think he has any special materials per se. Uh, he's going to put a uh, small money into it. Okay. We get a bonus. All right. So resolving an activity uses a skill. Mm -hmm. uh, opposing risk is a saving throw. Okay. Uh, you're putting. Are you putting money in? There is a small risk involved in this. Are you putting money in to improve the result or to uh, okay. mitigate to add to his role? To okay. So an appropriate skill for this one. What skill would you like to propose? Um, oh, and what, gonna... what resources are you spending on this? Uh, medium money. Okay. Uh, he, uh, see, character sheet. Um, there we go. Uh, now the dwarves that he uh, had the family hire are doing most of the mundane construction. He's going to be focusing on uh, the Shrine to the Mother. So I was thinking Arcana. Yeah, I can see that. He's basically working on the runes and whatnot. The regular construction, he has no skill in or any knowledge, so he leaves that to the experts. Uh, okay, uh, you're investing a small resource, so that's a plus two on your roll. Mm-hmm. Where did my character sheet go? There we go. There it did. Looks like a 20. I don't, you're not rolling with advantage, I don't think, in this case. Uh, no, I'm just trying to... There we go. Yep, that'd be a 20. Okay. Uh, that produces a, a a good result. Three small uh, outputs. That's something I do realize in here. It should be under medium outcome, shouldn't it? Oh, you're right. Sorry. Uh, so that would be a medium and a small. A medium and a small. Yes, thank you. Um... Yeah, actually, there's a an example where there should be a different, another special 
for that one, a special outcome. So. Well, I'm assuming just the medium outcome is the medium construction was completed. The small is just the extra thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to create a special uh, resource, which you could choose or not to, to employ, um, which is ahead of schedule. Um, so you can essentially knock one week off for a small uh, outcome. Um, or you can invest that in, in no. basically you get your money back. It, it, it worked out well. They saved uh, resources. Uh, I'd like it to be knowledge, if possible. Uh, knowledge of how to uh, better bring the mother here okay yeah so we'll make that into information resource of small right, that's it information yep okay and there is a small risk so you can roll a saving throw okay what kind of save In this case, I'll say a wisdom save. Ten. Ten. So one small, uh, one small risk, one small complication, I should say. So the complications include debts, rivals. Injuries, setbacks, or obstacles. Probably not curses, and if we need to, we can employ special, but I don't think there's... Um, well, maybe. The special ones include renown, mm -hmm. for example, a negative reputation, or a particular condition before you can proceed. That one's probably too much of an obstacle for this one. Exhaustion, but you're not pers personally... Well, I mean, you could take the exhaustion. It's going to hinder you. Um, or we can look to have a uh, setback means it will take an additional week to, to finish an obstacle becomes something you have to overcome or it's going to hinder you probably not injuries, but you can certainly accept that if you want, or it can be as simple as debt, which is just a money resource. Yeah. I'll just take it as debt. Okay. So a small debt. It's a bit more costly. Say it's owed to the dwarves. Okay. Okay. And um, just let the others know, one of the things that uh, I took for Silas is Aspect of the Moon. Uh, so he does not sleep at night. So uh, I discussed it with Mark, and basically that gives him like a half a week of downtime for every week. So I'll do that later. Yep. Once it builds up. All right, so that's the first yes. week for Silas. Yep. Anything else you'd like to narrate? How is the temple coming along or the house coming along? What's it look like so far? A uh, big gothic house made of stone. Uh, typical uh, uh, northeastern style uh, house. Probably has a walkway on the top. Uh, the widow's walk. Um, and I, I was thinking it's built at an area where it starts to rise back up to the cliffs again, not on the same side as the castle, but on like the other side of the, the town. Uh, not super high, but just it's a, on a bit of an overlook or something. Okay. So as a reminder of the geography, um, Aelthwater sits in kind of a depression along the sea um, to the south of that is where the um, the fingers were that's where the the lighthouse was to the north of that is a large uh, promontory scape on top of which is the mansion um, the village the the marsh village is to the north of that 
but if you continue going north, it does start to rise up into almost fjord-like. So there's a, there would be a good spot along there. Rough coast. Okay, and just uh, uh, not anything that's a specific activity, but uh, they continue inviting the pearl divers in uh, now that he's back because he can give them water breathing so they can do their job better. That's something he was doing before. Yep, and they're they're happy to receive that blessing. And it is starting to come across in that kind of terms too. Um, even mm -hmm. with the, I think you were doing it with non-marsh people too, like the the. Yeah, it was the the pearl divers were the the outsiders. So there's a bit of. He also does it with the sailors, but he can only do ten at a time. Okay, and that's, that's it. That's the first week for for Silas. Annie or Medrick, who's ready to go next? Um, I was going to spend a week. First, I'm going to check in with the captain, let him know, hey, survived. <laughs> um, I'm also going to find clothes for Gosh and then spend the time uh, harvesting Nexus crystals around town. Okay. Um, captain Olean, I only remember his first name for some reason at the moment, <laughs> uh, is very happy to see that you're alive and you get the impression that he spent a lot of sleepless nights. Well, he's an elf. Uh, he spent a lot of, <laughs> a lot of pacing nights, um, trying to figure out where you had gone and had, uh, he may have sent letters to other towns nearby and other reeves that he knows, uh, to try to find out any information. Uh, yeah, no, for us, it was like two days. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> He, he kind of does insist on the full story. What do you tell him? Just in brief. We've been up front with, with him about the situation, so basically everything. Okay. So, because he knows that the entire reason we were going there was to find, um, I'm blanking on names, but was to find people, and that we found information that will help us get to there. Um, I, I won't specify the um, the actual like name, like the oh my goodness, my brain is blanking today. There's a lot of names floating around, so don't worry about it. Yeah, um, like the the order, or like the Argenti Sagax. Uh, uh oh, you have uh, suddenly stopped moving. Internet, and please. For Annie, it's merely seconds. For us, it's minutes. <laughs> yeah, since there's no sound, I suspect she's probably disconnected. I, I think that that might be the case. We'll see if that uh, changes in a minute. Um, well, uh, Medrick? Yo. Uh, let's see. I think I got to... Yeah, I just... In case she sees a... Oh, okay. A Google chat. Uh, she's typing. Hopefully they'll come back in a moment. Uh, Medric, yep. what what is uh, the first week of Medric's homecoming look like? Uh, you mentioned, well, I got hit by a thing and it gave me minus two strength. Do I have to like spend time recovering from that, or or can I just like cast a spell? Can yeah. I cast like restoration on myself and make you myself better? You can use restoration. You can also use a week of recovery if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, and I will now, use restoration. <laughs> uh, it's just. Uh, is it greater restoration? Because that would cost money. That was weird because I could hear I'm you guys sure. perfectly fine. I, I restarted Zoom. Hmm. Like the entire time, like I could hear you guys like say, oh, she's gone. I can't hear her. I'm like, I can hear you guys. <laughs> well, it was nothing personal. Uh, we did start uh, briefly on Medric stuff, but uh, uh, we had just started. So if you don't mind holding on yeah. a second or two. Uh, 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 well, actually... Uh, I'm just trying to find restoration. <laughs> yeah, uh, why don't you you yeah. look that up, uh, Medric? Is we'll it greater high. or re greater or lesser? Uh, f I believe greater for for a stat penalty. Yeah, yeah, that would cost a hundred gold worth of diamonds. That is the yeah, only. Do we even have that? Yeah, it's under. It's greater restoration. 
I don't know what your resources are. Specific things like that you'll still have to have. Um, but if you're willing to spend a small resource and get rid of the small yeah. resource, you could just well, actually trade it in for that. We yeah, do I'll just rest. Have, <laughs> we do actually have uh I forgot to mention it last session, but we did find a bag, I think, of twenty one hundred gold and gems. Um it was 21 gems that were 100 gold each, and we hadn't detailed what was what. Um, so the if there's a diamond in there, he could use that. Is the danger of having kind of partially reset from the system and then went back into the gold counting one? Um, let's see here. I do have a rough... Oh, we lost... We lost Annie again. Oh. Her Zoom just crashed again. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, for money, yes. So that would be either a bunch of small resources or a medium resource. Um, or you can take a week, essentially, of recovery time. Yeah, I'll take a week. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So that's a relaxation activity. Mm-hmm. Um, no more strength penalty. Cost Rest nothing. workout. Outcome is small. Uh, resources gained are special recovery. Uh, now, if you want to, um, you can roll a constitution roll to see if you get better than the base uh, re recovery. My con is plus two. So it is a small outcome. 15. 15 is still a small outcome. So you basically get the, the base. Um, and that small income outcome, I'm assuming you're going to take as recovery. <laughs> yeah. To uh, to get rid of that, that penalty. Go to the spa, get a massage, you know. Essentially, that's <laughs> it. It's, it's, it's like, you know, uh, you actually, you just have to go to a tub and you can turn it into a spa. <laughs> Um, but nothing, no, no complicated things, not working on anything really, really heavy for that week. Okay. So I will add magic. Relaxing. All right. Uh, back to Annie, hopefully this time. <laughs> Ho hopefully I stay. D just to zoom through it. Basically, name of our empty Cygax is the only thing that we've really not, I don't think, mentioned to him. So um, that's the only thing that I'll keep. Okay. Uh, but everything else, we've been very upfront with with him about what's going on. So you can easily tell, especially now that you've got the heightened perception, uh, you can easily tell that uh, he is very relieved that you've returned. Uh, a little bit self conscious about it because. You feel like he disrupted everything he was doing trying to find you for at least the first week and has been distracted for the second week after that. And you can see that there's that sort of professional boundary that he's trying to reset a little bit. So while he's not cold to Annie, there's a certain level of professional wall that comes back up. Um, nonetheless, he wants to spend some time with you if you have available time. Extra, extra time I'll... I'll... We'll we'll chat. Um, overall, I do have a a full week, but like evenings. <laughs> Fair. Grab a drink a couple times, um, and the main thing that I'm going to do with my week is harvesting you know, six crystals around town. Okay. Now there is no cost to harvesting, but the outcome will only be small. Um, you're not sure if that's going to be sufficient. Oh, did you just? I think she did uh, <laughs> technology. Why? I, I, I hope at least this time it's not me. Oftentimes it's my technology. that's causing the issues. Uh, well, Marie, if you can still hear us, if you could hear us in the afterlife, please give us a sign. <laughs> um, this is frustrating. I, I, I hope that, uh, it's uh, not going to be a permanent problem. It's not going to be a permanent problem. It's just going to be annoying. Well, uh, in the meantime, I suspect that Silas has another week's worth of activity 
available. Um, I'm just going to put my screen in there temporarily so at least we have everybody on the right places. Mm -hmm. All right. And I suspect uh, it's similar to the first, or? Yeah, just another week of construction. And then there would be a week of, uh, oh, completely lost internet connection, she says. Oof. It's a prelude to invasion, that's what that is. Um, yeah, so it'd be just one week of construction, and then he'd have the week of uh, research from the overnight shifts. So do I have to, uh, I assume I keep rolling for construction? You do. Um, there okay. is uh, a little bit of risk of what can happen, and you can continue to invest. So one of the mm -hmm. side effects is if you get you know, a better outcome, you can potentially plow that back in. Yep. No, he's going to spend a uh, small uh, money on it again for an extra plus two. Okay. Actually, what did he get the first time? Because I think I forgot to include that plus two on the first one. Yeah, he had a 20 on the first one. That should have been a 22, actually. So it was too small and a medium. Okay. What do you want to take the other small as? Um, Just same thing, small info. We'll use it later. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he'll add a small cash into this one for plus two. It's an 18, so he gets the basic. Uh, well, it's one small plus one medium. Oh, no, an 18. Sorry, that's total. Yeah, so just the yeah. just the basic result in that case. What do you want me to roll while I'm here? Yeah. Uh, for harvesting, well, it's it, whatever skill you feel is appropriate. Uh, investigation would be appropriate uh, if you're just doing it uh, yourself. You can also invest uh, if you have resources like rumors or information in particular that makes sense in this case where you can be asking around that could also mean that you switch this from percept from investigation to um i mean even insight could potentially be used there or persuasion if you're trying to push other people to tell you where it is um could i during my conversation with verandale um Try to get the information of where the other the monsters around town showed up. Yeah, yeah. And use persuasion that way because he doesn't necessarily want to me to disappear again. What I will say is actually this is a use of an NPC who is an ally, so it'll actually okay. give you advantage on the roll. Uh, there is no cost to, to harvesting, so it won't be an investment, but you'll. So you're only going to get a small outcome unless you roll really well. 27. Which, using perception, I should know better. Per uh, persuasion, yeah. On the top, or sorry, persuasion. That's on the top of the small. So that's actually a total of six small outcomes. Now, you can take that, as if you, if you wish, as six small nexus crystals. Um, because it's a breach into Omatia from the shadow... I will allow you to choose whether you find omation sh uh, shards or shadow shards. They can I do half and half? You certainly can. Keeping in mind that for something that's the the the, the outcome you're looking for for the the big uh, uh, the big gate you're trying to build, small mm -hmm. shards might not be enough. Small shards are the equivalent kind of of what your necklace is. Mm -hmm. So. You may want to think about how you can invest to make it a better a better result to see if you can get a medium result and then start getting those medium shards. Okay. Um, it may also be possible with the conversion, for example, to take the small and try to get medium, mm -hmm. but it will cost quite a bit to do that. As in, it'll cost, I think, most of those resources to do it. Okay. And remember, you've got two medium unspecified resources. Right. I would say that those can't be shards themselves, but mm -hmm. you could use no, them. No, but they might count contacts. as information for finding them. Exactly. Exactly. So she could roll on the medium chart instead of the small. So you could invest those to try to boost your outcome next time. Okay. Makes sense? Yep. And what I'm actually going to do, because we already have four Omasha shards, I'm actually going to get most, like, two Omasha shards for, or 
five my five shadow shards, one on my shadow shard. Okay. You keep track of those. Yep. Uh, do you want to narrate how this this investigation goes across town with uh, Captain Verendel in tow? Um, basically, it's just going to be fairly matter of fact of okay, this is where the big fight happened, where we were. This is where there was this going on there, basically. And, this... I, and I think with yourself and Captain Verendel there, you're also mm -hmm. like, can we go and look inside your home where this happened? To get that, so you're you're yeah. you're kind of getting getting a chance to get the full inside view. Okay. Finding shards. So Silas, we did uh, the building one, and you got the yep. basic building. Now you're going to do some some researching. Yeah. Uh, what's that? So there is a cost to that. The outcome is the same level as the cost. Uh, yep. Let's see what he's got. Um, actually, he'll be doing a lot of, um, uh, probably going to the Tinkerer's shop for special materials while he's reading the, uh, the thing, because I'm going to spend his large money to try to get a large result. Okay. So big, and, big spend. Uh, I'm going to use one of the undeclared medium ones uh, as basically some of the information that she had given him to add to the book. Uh, basically to, to add to the role. Okay. So that's a medium bonus on a large outcome. Uh, medium bonus is plus yep, four. Four, yep. Okay. And that's my match. Um. And what skill are you going to use for this, Arcana? Yeah. It's the only one he's got that really makes sense. I will remind you as well that there are NPCs that can help you with things. Dudek, for example, comes to mind. Okay, I thought he had left with uh, what's her face. If he's still around, then sure, he'll get Dudek's assistance. I don't believe you mean. I don't think he left with Valenti. If that's what you suggested. Yeah. No, he came back with you. Who was tempted to? Okay. <clears throat> um. So that'll give you advantage. Yes. Okay. Uh, he'll spend one of the undeclared small ones, too, or the unspecified small ones as well. So it's got a plus six total. Okay. What is that? What is that one? Another one of the... Yeah, again, some of the information that she had added into the book. Okay. Uh, so, hopefully it don't crap out. Yay, that's a 32. Yeah, that's over the top of the chart. Mm -hmm. So you gain, as a result from large outcomes, you gain a small, two medium, and a large. And okay. Large you can break those up in whatever medium. direction you want. I think large information is what you were hoping yeah. for the most. Um, uh, I think it's basically all just going to be information, but in this case it's about portals rather than about Mother Hydra. Okay. He's just basically preparing for when he finally has to try to do this. So you could also take special formula, which would be uh, the construction formula. Okay. Um, and basically so that'll, if... that'll count as another additional bonus on your construction of the portals. Okay. Um, yeah, he'll take large formula. I mean, that's, hopefully he can make big portals there. Okay. Now, there is a small risk with uh, research. Yep. And uh, what save do you want him to roll? Or do you want me to roll? I think this is an intelligent save. Uh, 11. Yep, no effect whatsoever. 
So okay. you probably strain your eyes a little yeah, bit, but you enough. recover pretty well. Okay. Uh, so that's his time. Okay. Yeah, he's done second week. All right. Annie, what are you doing in the second week? Um, my second and third week are both going to be the same. I'm going to be reviewing the notes from Gaetano because that was a consequence from our last downtime was that it would take me two weeks. Okay. It is possible that you'll do well enough that you'll essentially overcome that obstacle as well. Fair um, enough. You all had inherited a number of new magical items. Did any of Annie's magical items change? Uh, I have the Cloak of Arachnid instead of the Ring of Mind Shielding uh, tuned. Okay. Um, so, and that was because I'm no longer running, so I'm no longer blocking people from finding me, okay. which was the main purpose of that. Please make for me a constitution saving throw. Difficulty 15. During that second week, after running around for all this time, finding these shards, and the shards themselves are almost non-physical in nature. Because you know what to look for, because you have the little uh, amulet as well that Tassar gave you, you have not seen Tassar since you got back either, by the way. You would have okay. thought he would have been waiting, maybe the two weeks he gave up. We have not seen the head nor uh, hide nor tail of Tassar. But um, you are able to collect these shards. And for that week while you're doing it, uh, maybe it is because Verendel is nearby, so another uh, ally. Maybe it's because you return back to this normal space. Um, the only thing you attribute any oddness to is the finding of the shards themselves. Um, you felt like the, the fifth dimensional nature of them and the fact that they aren't really revealed to the common person um, was probably why you felt kind of strange. Uh, even the people's homes who you'd gone into they had felt strange about them being there, but they could not put their finger on it. Um, but they allowed you to look around, and you sure enough found what was there. So there is, if you will, a sort of extra-dimensional breeze that happens around where these crystals are, something you discover. After that first week, though, having had your success, and you sit down and go through Gaetano's notes, you find your eyes swimming a little bit. Not enough to distract you, but enough so much that you notice it. As you're turning the pages of Gaetano's book over and over, you suddenly realize you're wearing the ring again. The ring that you took off a week ago. There it is, plain as day, on your hand. And then your eyes don't seem to be swimming quite so much anymore. Um, for magical purposes, you are not attuned to the ring. But you are wearing okay. it. Okay. Interesting. So, I believe we covered this under researching before? I believe so. Okay. Uh, what are you spending? Oh, right. The book itself counts as the resource, and it's not... Uh, it's, it's not to spend. Uh, not, not spent, yeah. Yeah. You Basically, can... it's understanding Gaetano's notes. Right. You can, if you wish, invest additionally into it to make it easier. Mm -hmm. um, could I use... Um, to do... And I would I don't, encourage I... everyone to spend resources, because you will get more. I've just been neglecting it before. <laughs> Um, could I use a, a small resource um, in information, basically information learned? I now know more about how to read these types of reports. So, from so the one of the I've unspecified as a, as a ones, you're kind yeah. of, yeah, I'll accept that. Okay. So you're going to invest, is that a small resource? Uh, I'll do a small, yeah. Okay. All right. So it is a, a uh, investment to make it easier. So it's still a 
Um, did I give a, a, a size to the book? If it was a small resource or a medium resource? Um, I have it noted as a small, but I don't, I think that okay. that was just me putting it somewhere. No, so. I, th I think it is small. Small basically determines how difficult it is as yeah. well. Um, so you get a plus two on your roll. Okay. And I'm just trying to choose. Um, can I use history? And putting the information that we found out about my uncle's ship as well as part of that knowledge that was found. I like that. Yes. Yep. The uh, conspiracy, perhaps, or the strange orders. Yeah. Oh, that teetered on a one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Still not great at 12. 10, but a 12 in total for small... Uh, that gives you a small outcome. So you just barely made it. Um, so you do get to check off another week of activity. There is, however, okay. a risk. It's a small risk. Um, I, I, I'm open to arguments as to which uh, saving throw it should be, but I think I'm leaning towards wisdom. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Okay. Either wisdom or just uh, or or intelligence of like banging head on table, not understanding what it is. <laughs> it's up to you, whichever one you feel is more appropriate. I, I think intelligence, where where that's the stat that I was using. Okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. No problem. So this time you start to figure out. Keitano's particular way of writing his notes, the way he sometimes leaves things out because he's already said them once, why would he write them twice? Um, probably a very smart practice when you're on board a ship and you could be interrupted at any moment uh, to be as terse as possible. All right. Back around to Medric. Hey. Mm -hmm. After your For the second week. week. Yeah, I'm all nice and relaxed and feeling strong again. My lift numbers have gone back to where they were. <laughs> I wish I could say that in real life. <laughs> hey, have you had a chance to take a real week, a week off in real life? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I know. Between you know, the holidays, playing, come on. We're playing a fantasy game because everything gets restored when you sleep. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> all right. Um, I was, I had, I had spoken to Wish before about uh, plate armor or commission, commissioning a plate armor. Mm-hmm. This was like several weeks, like several in-game weeks ago, obviously. But, so I'd like to follow up with that. Okay. Uh, in fact, because it's been two weeks since you were here and another week since you were relaxing, uh, I believe that armor is done. Nice. Um, I don't have the details on it because I had forgotten about that because that probably was, what, six months ago? <laughs> maybe more? Yeah. <laughs> maybe eight months ago? Uh, hopefully you have the details of what that armor was meant to be. It was meant to, well, to provide additional AC. <laughs> yeah, just I think it was, was it full plate? Yeah, I it should be in my notes if I can yeah. find it. Yeah, and it's just, it's full plate, so whatever masterwork bonus wish yeah. gives it. I know my, the armor he made me had one extra AC. Yeah, what I'm going to have you do is I'm actually going to have, well, oh, let's make it a roll. Okay. Uh... He is quite proficient. So, oops. Do I remember how to roll? <laughs> so that plus that um, makes it that. Wow, natural twenty. Hey. For a total of thirty. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, let me look up what the plate normally gives you. Um, I think full plate is an AC of 18 normally. Uh, okay. Well, that's not what I wanted anyway. So this will come out as... 
fact, magical plate. Magical? Hell yeah. Um, all right, let's see what we've got here. Um, yeah, actually... Uh, it will effectively be, it's not actually made out of mithril, mm -hmm. but it has the same quality that mithril has because the way that he's built all the segmented pieces. Hell yeah. So it is, uh, counts as a magical plus one armor. Uh, it does not impose disadvantage on stealth checks. It's so well made. Yeah. In fact, Wish himself is quite quite surprised and plow, uh, proud of what he's created. Mm -hmm. I've never thought of doing it quite that way. I, I guess you could say you inspired me. Wow, that is amazing. So uh, now for the painful part. How much does this cost? <laughs> well, ordinarily this would be a life's work. Something I would expect a noble to pay quite a large penny for. But since you did rebuild the temple and have been doing a lot of good work here. Uh, I'm going to give you a discount. So it will cost a medium. Okay, it I'll would give him a medium. It would have cost a large. Okay, <laughs> I will happily give him a medium. Oh, but you're Silas's friend, so it costs two large. <laughs> <laughs> two medium. <laughs> give you a discount. Two medium instead of one large. No. Um, although he will say, and maybe you can be a better influence on my son-in-law. I will do my best. He is a bit difficult. <laughs> and he does ask you questions about uh, Silas. We won't go through the entire roleplay mm -hmm. scene here now, but essentially he is digging for, well, from your perspective, it's almost like digging for dirt. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to him? And how how do you characterize Silas to him? I don't, I don't confront him on anything, but it's like I also like try to, I, I do mention that Silas like, has gotten my back multiple times and that if it wasn't for him, chances are our group would not have succeeded several times. And just to like, I'm trying to like make Silas look like a generally good dude. Okay. Even though I don't agree with this, with his choice of, uh, <laughs> with <the> each throne. <laughs> he may be a heathen, but he's a good heathen. <laughs> he may be a cultist, but he's not, but he hasn't killed me. He's technically yeah. <laughs> not as evil as he could be. Um, let's make this a, and he will, a persuasion And he will help us, with... like, find Melora. <laughs> True. Um, let's make this a persu persuasion check with advantage. Your difficulty is going to be 15, because he's oh, not shit. disposed oh, to like Silas. But in this moment, he's listening. Plus one. Oh, that's not a good bonus. Well, that's an 11. With advantage. Oh, right. 14. Okay. Wah, wah. So still not quite enough. He does. He seems to be very skeptical, um, and you get the impression it's sort of like, "You're, thank you for saying such nice words," <laughs> but they didn't quite penetrate enough. An attempt was made. <laughs> An attempt was made. Um, so that's really just an interaction. That's not really a full action. Is there something in particular you'd like to accomplish? Uh, so was that a medium money or a medium money or a medium, medium money? Yeah. Okay, because I only have three small money. So can I give him three small money instead? Uh, he will accept the three small money. Okay. Yeah. You what's should, the conversion rate you, between? You uh, should have. You should have uh, other resources other than that, though. Yeah, you've got those uh, those non specified resources. You had two mediums and yeah. three small. Okay, so I'll give him a medium resource, which is equal to a medium money. I guess I just have to like do the conversion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, uh, those are unspecified resources that can be used for any kind of resource. Okay. At the moment. Gotcha. So he gets a medium money. They're I now have. Cards. Yeah. I now have one medium money. Just because I was slow and giving out some resources before so i'm trying to make up for that a little bit okay so uh is there something else you'd like to accomplish uh working on the temple really okay so religious service Holy yeah and uh may maybe not constructing the temple like maybe not upgrading it but it's like just like hey i'm back i've been gone for a while i should like you know do my tarot duties <laughs> okay so for just giving blessings for a Stuff week, like you, 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 you know, take off the the beautiful armor you just got. 
uh, put on just the regular cloth and clothes, or maybe you wear the armor. Oh, no, I keep it on. Okay. <laughs> um, this is when you pride and joy. You, you, this is never coming out. You, you find that, especially as your body temperature starts to heat up, because naturally doing these religious services, a little nimbus of flame forms around you. Um, the way that the armor is designed, you almost think that Wish took this into account, and it's almost as though the flames themselves are... are, are um, moving across your body in an almost mesmerizing pattern. Uh, it certainly does help uh, as, uh, uh, you know, as the congregation comes together for your regular services or whatever mm -hmm. service you're doing. I don't know if you're doing the regular ones, if you're doing, uh, keeping in mind that, that Ignean services tend to be a little brutal. Um, but I don't, uh, well, Rule in what way? Well, I, I should know well, this. Well, if you recall, healing, uh, especially large healing from Ignean services, uh, did involve a lot of fire and could often yeah. be very painful. Uh, people did heal on the other side, but it was a very painful process. It's like, I've cauterized your wound. Yeah, yeah. You've lost <laughs> a layer of skin, but you're no longer missing an eye. It'll grow back. Um, yeah. Um, I, I give the option, but I don't force people in, honestly. <laughs> okay. So you're going to spend a week uh, uh, performing religious service. Uh, the base outcome for that is small. You can invest to make that a larger uh, uh, outcome. Or you can invest just to make it a, a better outcome, or a more likely outcome. Uh, invest, uh, what would I be investing? Whatever resources you have. So if you, if you invest a medium resource, it becomes a medium outcome. If you invest a large, out, a, a large resource, it becomes a large outcome. Or you can invest the small, medium, and large just to get a better roll. Because you're most likely going to be roll rolling religion here. And I don't remember what your religion yeah. level is. Yeah, I'll invest one small resource. Okay, that'll give you a plus two in the roll. Um, and my religion is, wrong sheet, plus two only. Wah, wah. Okay, so still a small outcome, but you will have a plus two on the roll. A plus two and plus two from my proficiency. Okay. Well, whatever your religion uh, stat is yeah or uh, skill is 12 total of 12 plus yeah. 2 because you invested uh, but that's still yeah, no, that, gives that's, you that's a small there. income yeah oh it's already there okay mm -hmm. yeah well that's, that gives you a uh, a small outcome so basically it's an even now you can choose what kind of outcome it is uh, the resource typically is a renowned resource mm-hmm uh, renowned resources are useful because you can use them to um, for roles. Basically, uh, I just wrote those rules up. Or uh, let me just look that up. Make sure. So uh, they can use it as a bonus on appropriate roles, such as persuasion, once per day. Um, you can also have multiple kinds of renown, but you can only use uh, a uh, one renown on a particular role. Okay. Um, Renown only has one rank. If you want to get better Renown, you actually have to get a better result. Yep. So if you wanted to upgrade that from a small to a medium, you'd have to get you'd have to get a medium result. Um, so you can use that. Uh, give it an appropriate name if you want, such as uh, uh, you know religious leader would be an appropriate one. That's your reputation going on around town. Or Phoenix champion uh, with a cool armor. Sure, Phoenix champion. Or if you wish, um, you don't have to take it as that renown. You can also take it. Uh, where are we here? Uh, oh yeah, I read about political service. And was you can also take it as contacts, money, information, favor, or rumors. And religious service, by the way, risks nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you can choose if you want that renown, or you can gain contacts, people you've met through this. Money, they are actually donating to the church, which technically is you. Yep. Uh, information, which is people linger and are willing to tell you things. Uh, favors, which is, I really like what you've done here. If you need something, let me know. Or rumors. And again, rumors are less reliable, but you get more of them. Well, I'm considering like a lot of people come through the temple... I'll try to get information about like any potential like portals or tears that might have been witnessed around the town. Okay. Note that down then is uh, small information on portals. Um, once this is all done, please tell me any information, favors, contacts, or rumors that you've acquired so that I can make up the appropriate NPCs and flesh those out. 
Okay. Small information acquired about portals. All right. Back around to the top for silence. Uh, what did you say about oh. uh, letting you know what? I'm uh, just trying when, to when all this is done, let me know any of the contacts, information, favors, rumors that you come up with so that I can flesh them out. Okay. They can technically wait to be fleshed out, but if I know that they're in the wings, then I can... I can make sure there's some NPCs and some rumors appropriate for your information in this case. Okay, um, this is into the third week, or technically for Silas, the fourth week. Um, yeah, it's just construction. Okay. So. Same uh, investment of small investment, or a small, yeah, small investment? Uh... I think he'll make two small uh, money investments. Well, he'll pay the one small money for the week and then uh, two small monies to boost it. Okay. Uh, and uh, if Dudek... No, no, sorry. Dudek's not with the construction. He's with the research. Anyways, right. so just two smalls to boost the roll. Uh, there we go. Oh, so nice. 24. 24 puts you up into a much higher category. That's five small this time. Uh, no, it'd be uh, oh, sorry, it's a, uh, two uh, medium, sorry, it's, two small. Right, right. The maintenance fee is, is one less. Yes. So two small and two medium results. Okay. Now, uh, as I said, you could get a result which is the opposite of setback, which essentially is ahead of schedule. And you could be done this week if you wanted to reinvest that, essentially. Sure, yeah. Uh, okay, so there's two smalls and a medium extra. Um, so a small would drop it by a week? Uh, yeah. Okay, so that'd be one small and one medium still left. So yeah, he'll do that, uh, and he, he'll just put those into info about uh, how to bring the mother in for later use. Okay. Um, there is a risk. Yeah. Uh, you do have additional resources now you can spend on the risk if you want to mitigate it, but the risk is only uh, small, I think, at this point. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll just roll it, and if I get a... I get a problem. I get a problem. Okay. Uh, what save do you want me to roll? Um, it's up to you. I think I would be leaning towards. You're physically doing the work yourself, so I would say either strength or dex would be appropriate. Sure, I can roll a dex save. Uh, in that case, nah. I'll see what I get. Dexterity. Come on, roll. There we go. Seven. Seven, okay. I get one small problem. Right. So, for complication. Um, I could be mean and make it a, a setback. <laughs> you just about finished and then it stops, but I don't think that makes sense. Um, That'd be small bonus negated by small problem. Work out in the end. Um, yeah, I mean, I can do that. That's it, it's kind of weird to do that, but it would essentially be you're back on you're back on track. So, what is the small setback that hmm. uh, causes you to need an extra week? You thought you were done, and then something happens. Um, He just finds out he was doing he was just doing something wrong and has to redo the work. Okay. Maybe there's some of the masonry that you started off on the wrong foot and had to Well, he's doing the uh like the shrine area. Oh, so right, right. He probably just screwed up with some of the runes and has to redo them. Okay. That's not how you spell mother. <laughs> okay, that's uh Week three for him. Okay. Week three for Annie. 
is my second week of Gaetano's notes. Right. For for this where it's the same thing, can I use basically? Uh, I'll add like the 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 resources that I have are my knowledge basically. So like that that experience isn't just going to go away. So is that something that I can continue to use or? Yeah, so as a spendable resource, it goes away, but you still know that stuff. It's not like okay. it disappears from your head. Same with information. It's basically okay. it no longer has trade value, but you know it. Okay. Um, if it was going to be gone, it'd be more like a sacrifice, which would be a whole other different category of things. whole different thing. Um, so, yeah, I will roll. Okay, so back to researching. Yeah, are you going to invest in this resource? Are you it itself is its own resource to invest itself, so it yeah it's it pays its cost, but um, you can add more or you can uh, you can invest to make it easier or to get more out of it. Um. Or again, if you know of an NPC who you think would be favorable to helping you, that can also make it easier. Um, why is my computer doing this? <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. For research search, there's not really much that can be added. I mean, you do have some unspecified resources left. You could add, you could make one of them into contact, for example, yeah. who could help you with this. Or someone who owes you a favor. Um. The con it's more a favor than contact in this case because it's going to do something for you or arrange something for you. Yeah. Um, hmm. But as well, it's not information that I want to get out. That's fair. That's totally so fair. so I, I wouldn't reach out to anybody about it. Okay. So a straight up uh, researching straight role. Straight up researching history role. 21. 21. All right. Uh, it is a small, so your result is three small. And I would suggest that you, at this point, rather than trying to batch these together, think of three different things in this area which you'd want to have some information about. So it could be, you know, courses, uh, charting courses. It could be sailing. It could be, uh, uh, you know, discipline. On board a ship, it could be, uh, it could even be rumors about the sea or creatures themselves that the Gatanos run across. So, um, mm -hmm. rather. So, from what I remember, these were papers on what Gaetano was looking into in the area. So I would use one of them for for that. Okay. Like, why even was Gaetano here? It is kind of his log, so it covers a, a broad possibility yeah. of things. But yes, there are specific things like that in there as well. So three, small. Okay, and there is a small risk involved. Yes. So what would you think your risk could be coming from? I think in, in, uh, intelligence, what you had before, because you were trying to figure it out. Oh, no. Roll the one. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. Well, thankfully, uh, a, a one is not a special failure in this one. Just a, you still got an eight though in total. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it is one small uh, com uh, complication. Typical complications include debt, rivals, or renown. Um, it's a good question as to which one of those might fit the most because you're trying not to let anybody know about it. Um, it could be that you, in your work maybe you happen to, to go downstairs with the book while you were eating and you left it open for a second and someone knows that could be a rival um it could be renown would be a weird one in this case what kind of negative yeah. renown do you get from reading a book but uh maybe if you're seen with gaetano's book and there's some reputation about that um, um another one what can about be exhausted. it being from the information itself in the book. Okay. Injury. There are certain things you did not want to know. Uh, Paper cuts. 
<laughs> I I, dro I dropped it on my toe and it hurt a lot. Uh, um, but no, like from the information in the book, finding out information that uh, on s basically coming across something that I probably shouldn't have found out, and okay. that can cause. Um, uh, hmm. I would say maybe changing my perspective on something. Okay. Like uh, someone that that we've come across that I thought was one way goes turns into a rival because of information that I knew. Um yeah, I can work with that. So uh There's only so much risk that reading a book in your room can cause. True, true. Uh, that's why it's only a small risk, too. I, I think that's why we... But my setback last time was that it would take me another week to to do it because there was just nothing that really fit. Uh, there's also an interesting possibility here that you end up with bad dreams. I'm good with that. Okay. So you're going to write down the special uh, condition hexed. And I will have that start after downtime. So the form of the hex will be these dreams, but they come up in flashbacks while you're doing other things. Uh, and once per day, I can impose a small penalty on a single roll. So it'll be a minus two penalty. I'll probably forget about it most days, but that's where we're at. And it will last for a week after downtime. And I'll make a note to figure out what that dream was. Figure out what, what's going on. Bad, bad dream one, uh, once per day, minus two penalty for one week after downtown. Yep. Okay. That's it exactly. Um, on that third week, um, do you take the ring off and put it somewhere, or do you leave it on? I might, for science, take it off. For science, okay. Or science. I I took this off. I vividly remember taking this off. Where did when did it get back here? Make a Constitution saving throw. Twelve. Twelve. Um, as you're tossing and turning at the later end of that week, um, with dreams of strange creatures that you that cause you to drown, there is a voice that comes to you um, almost in the context of the dream almost like a siren across the sea but the voice sounds familiar uh, plaintive feminine light afraid yeah, on. Uh, and the voice um, the only thing you're left with when you wake up uh, is please help me You wake up cold and clammy. Your skin is wet. Your skin feels gray or seems gray. And after a few days, you discover the ring is back on your finger. First object. <laughs> what does the third week for Medric look like? The third week is going to be spent probably... Trying to upgrade the temple. Okay. Physically upgrade? You want to do a little construction? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I see Silas doing construction, and it's like, I can't let his temple be better than mine. <laughs> now, this is your hmm? third week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's uh, two weeks left. A small construction does take two weeks, so you have just yeah. enough time. potentially. Small construction done. it is. I mean, you can always start a larger construction. You just don't know when it'll get done. And essentially, at that point, you're paying for someone else's downtime to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you will. It will cost a small resource to start mm -hmm. with. Um, for small construction, you only end up paying a small at the beginning, and then the other week, you don't pay any additional ongoing costs. Okay. But you do have to roll both weeks. Okay. Uh, you can add additional investments into it to make it easier. 
Um, you can, in, you could make it a medium one as well, but the chances of you finishing it new, soon are diff- limited. Yeah. Thinking from the perspective of the character, would he want a fairly substantial change to the temple? Would he want a medium? Not realizing he has the only time for a small. Is it a, is it a small right now, or would it be a medium? Uh, well, depending on what you're looking at, small is what you can time wise afford. But don't imagine that the character knows that he's only got two weeks left. Yeah, I suppose. Um, what kind of a change is he, is he look, looking to make? Let's try start from that. Try from the fiction first. Just to fit more people in, because eventually, like he's like he's leading the temple right now, but he, he doesn't have like the mind for like leadership and all that kind of stuff. And it's like he'd rather be out there like exploring and like burning down Ignis' enemies, because he is, like, a soldier slash acolyte, right? Okay. So, um, like, his hopes is to have somebody else take over this temple. Well, like, he's still going to help out, obviously. But he'd like to see it grow. Maybe just not him being the one running it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, he's looking to add maybe some additional antechambers rather than yeah. a, a audience chambers. It's being not... able to fit more people into it at once. Okay. All right. So, that's a, it's a relatively small enhancement. Yeah. Um... It'll get a few more pews in, or a, a, a few more spaces. Now, again, do you want to you want to invest anything in? Are you doing the construction yourself? I'm probably going to invest uh, one small resource and one small money. Okay. Like the money to hire somebody else to help. Okay. And what's the other resource? The money and lumber. Actually, no, not lumber. That's flammable. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So building qu- materials, basically. Quarting, quor, uh, quarried stone, basically, at that yeah, point. Yeah, okay. asbestos. <laughs> so turning it, into, turning it into resource materials. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be two bonuses onto a roll. Now, since you're not doing the construction yourself, it's more about how you're commanding the construction to happen. Yeah. Um, so persuasion fits, but uh, I think there's probably a better skill in there. I don't have the skill list in front of me. Yeah. Um, mm. See. Insight, like knowing what goes where. It's more of a interior decorating kind of thing. It's more of a personal uh, thing than insight. <laughs> um, history would work. Religion would also work as an appropriate uh, connecting. If you let's have... go with religion because my history is minus one. <laughs> so, okay, okay, so there is. So it's plus four under the roll. Okay. It is a small outcome you're looking for. Real well. 25. 25 is well enough. That's five small in res- in return. Nice. So what I would suggest is contacts or favors are probably the more, more likely outcomes of this. As you are not only making contacts, you're, you're finding people who, you know, maybe next week would actually work for free. Essentially, you've got the favor there and spending that instead of money if you wanted to. Okay. So like I have five contacts, four favors... To come up with, it's, and I'll let you know as soon as I have them. It's five small, so you could use them as contacts and favors if you wanted to. Um, yeah, there's not a lot others that fit in that particular case. Information would also work, though. Rumors mm-hmm. would also work. Essentially, imagine not only the direct outcomes, but you have these workers there for a week, and workers will talk. So it could, oh, be, yeah. <laughs> could be you could you could pick up one in rumors if you wanted to. Basically, a little uh, loose lips talk about what's going on in town. Um, uh, it could also be in renown. You could pick up a uh, a renown for the work you're doing. Although I think you already have renown right now. Yeah, from other uh, services from right. the, from week two. Um, it could also be materials. So you find a good lead on additional materials. Okay. So you've got some options open to you. Um, really it's the beginning of the next week but I'll, I'll linger with you for a bit longer mm-hmm. um, as uh, there is a knock on the door hello uh, oh that's not just a hammer knock come on in as a uh, slender half elf woman walks in um, short uh, platinum blonde hair piercing blue eyes um, kind of a, a, a weathered um, skin, not not rough, but just having been exposed to sun quite a bit, gives it a kind of a a, a reddish gold color. 
a uh, smirk on her uh, on her lips. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you see a uh, sham, which is a basically a large um, uh, clarinet-like uh, instrument strapped across her back. But what strikes you next, uh, probably most most immediately after all after taking in the face, is the red, orange, and gold vestments that are relatively minimized. It's not like a full robe. It's more like uh, three straps, essentially, that are, are thin, very uh, nicely um, uh, made, and you see the symbols of, of uh, Ignis's fire along the edges of them. And just below um, these, you also see a, a very nice-looking uh, breastplate of what initially looks like overlapping uh, bronze plates, but then you realize, based on the, the crudity, they're actually overlapping bronze dragon scales. Nice. Um, oh, I forgot the greetings. Me too. <laughs> I'm a bad ignorant. Uh, may you live in the Everlight, friend. Hello, greetings. You as well. I assume you are the local beacon? I am. Uh, Only as of recently. Well, maybe I can give you some assistance. And she she bows eloquently, um, wearing a kind of uh, leather breeches, kind of the, the, the road-worthy kind of look. Uh, I am lamplighter Tabia Kahino at your service. I received a message that you might be needing some help down here, and Looking around, I can see that you need a lot. Not that the place doesn't look fantastic, and I love what you're doing here, but I don't see anybody helping you, not on a regular basis. Well, these fine folk that I've hired to help the construction are helping, but uh, I guess they are getting paid, for, paid to do so. But yes, I can use any helping hands I can get. Wow. It's good to meet you. I'm glad to be here. I got a message when I was up in... Uh, uh, oh wait, where was she? Uh, Question to the DM: To how do you spell her name? <laughs> uh, T A B I A, mm-hmm. and then Kahino is K A H I N U. Um, wow, I actually wrote. Wow, that's weird. I can't even read right now. Um, oh, there he is. Uh, yeah. I was in Paravel um, on essentially a pilgrimage. I haven't been back in that area for a while. And you know Paravel as the capital of Alaria, the mm-hmm. island to the north. And, uh, well, I got a message from the main temple that you needed some help. It was kind of non-specific and not terribly urgent, so I I did kind of take my time. I well, got a message the message that, was received. I got a message that Medrick needed a date for this party. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll catch her up uh, on the things that happened. <laughs> okay. The, the, seemed, the downfall of the previous temple and Flamekeeper Tidewell. She seems rather surprised to hear that a Flamekeeper was lost. Um, they didn't they didn't say that. I was just told you needed help at a small temple, but okay, I'll see what I can do. I'll mention the uh, otherworldly entities too, like in vague detail, obviously. All right, gets better and better. Uh, all right, I'll uh, I'll see what I can look into. I don't know anybody in town yet, but I'll uh, I'll ask a few questions. How is the temple doing? It's doing pretty good. Well, for the times that I can actually be here instead of going on adventures and slaying Ignis's enemies. <laughs> well, it seems appropriate. You're a Kmar, right? I am. More power to you. All right, well, I'll keep the home fires burning. I may not be as uh, elegant or <laughs> uh, big a flame as you are, but I'll see what I can do. Much appreciated. And you get the sense that uh, that Tabia is really down to earth. You've dealt with a lot of, of Ignean, uh, Ignians and field people at 
at temples and uh, uh, especially flame keepers are pretty easy going. Lamplighters are like the easy going of easy going. <laughs> Their job literally is to travel from place to place spreading the word of Ignis. Um, they don't tend to stick around any place very long. And the fact that they sent a lamplighter here as opposed to a flame keeper or even a prelate um, does kind of indicate that while they heard you, they're not spending much resources on this. They didn't even send someone who was local. It took her like, you know, a couple of weeks to, to sail here. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like, well, thanks, I guess. Better than nothing. <laughs> she seems pleasant enough, though. Yeah. And, and you know, orienting herself, she seems very um, likable to people. She is not from the, the fire and brimstone style of Ignean, which is also very odd. Um, uh, more like the home fires are burning than, than anything else. I'll mention that the Three Bells is a wonderful establishment. And if you if she's looking for a drink or food to, to go there. Always good to have a good local recommendation. Thank you. No problem. And so there's a new NPC in your realm. Hey. Lamp, Lamplighter Kahino. Um, who can also assist with religious matters uh, as well as be drawn upon potentially for other things. Perfection. All right. Back around to Silas for the last, well, last two weeks for you. Hey. Uh, well, one week of construction... So he pays a small for that. Um, yeah, he'll uh, use one of the uh, the other non-specific smalls. He'll make that a money and put that into it too. Okay. Let's so go plus two. Maybe hiring some assistants for the week to make sure your runes are straight. Yeah, or just, uh, it's the final week, so he's paying the dwarves a little extra to make sure everything's going well. Oh, there you go. So that's a 22. That's a 22. Total. So that puts it at four small result. Uh, no, it's Sorry, on a medium. I do that again. Uh, yes, two small, one medium. So how would you like to take okay. those resources? Um, I would say that Renown would be an appropriate one, especially that the temple is done. Um, yeah, he can take a small Renown. And give that... Whenever you have Renown, by the way, give it a name so it has a specific sort of meaning. Um, a little uh, semi-small phrase or whatever it is that makes it applicable. Mm, I have to think of something, but something about being the uh, servant of the mother. Okay. Um, and that leaves you a medium and a small? Yeah. Contacts would also be appropriate. Um, money's a little bit harder in this case. Yeah. Um, a special... Um, it could be the equivalent of, of the, the hex and give you a blessing for a period of time. Yeah. Um, if I took the uh, medium one... Oh, wait a minute. it was a small, it was two smalls and a medium. One of the smalls is the completion of the construction. Uh, one small is renowned, so that just leaves the medium. Um, I mean, could it be, uh, like if it's a medium, could it be something like uh, adding hallowed or something to the uh, the shrine? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, is there a particular mechanic for Hallowed? 
Uh, there's a spell. It basically stops certain kinds of things from entering. Uh, that or it might be like the there's a Mordenkainen spell that's have like Mordenkainen or Mordenkainen's private sanctum that just kind of keeps other entities from like teleporting in and such. So Hallow um, is a fifth level spell. Yep. Um, you can bind one effect to the area, so you can bind courage, darkness, daylight, energy protection, energy vulnerability, everlasting rest. Extra dimensional interference, fear, silence, or tongues. That's the the hollow spell. I, I I would say that would be uh, worthy of a medium. Okay. Um, Which one of those effects would you want to choose? Um. Or if you have another effect that makes a more sense, then I'll certainly accept that. You probably don't want to do uh, extra dimensional interference, so you don't have. Uh, a blockage against extra extra planar travel, considering what you want to do with this. Mm. Um, well, I say the other option is Morden Canaan's Private Sanctum, which is a fourth level spell, although it only lasts a, a day. Never mind. Um, yeah, Hallow lasts until dispelled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Can I get back to you on that? Sure. And for your other week? Yes, the research. Research, research, research. Oh, I got to do the... Uh... Oh, the risk. Yeah. And risk is only small, I believe, for construction, so... Sure. Um... Yeah, I'll pass one of these small, non-specific ones at that. Um, just maybe some information or guidance. Okay. Uh, and what's your saving throw going to be? Uh, about one point it was wisdom, then it was intelligence, then it was strength or dexterity. So which would you like me to roll? <laughs> it's entirely how you see that last week going. Um, I'd say intelligence. It's not his best one, but he's trying to do some, like he's carving runes and whatnot. So, okay. paying extra attention to that. All right. Uh, uh, and he got a seventeen. Yeah. So yay. Well enough to uh, to avoid any problems this week. Okay. He kept the ruler straight and all that stuff. Now he's got uh, the portal research. Although, he's got a bunch of information and a formula for the portals. Keeping in um, mind that the research does have an expense to it. And the outcome yeah, is based yeah. on the expense. So. Uh, I think... Um, he might try... I think... Uh, maybe he'll spend this week trying to triangulate the portals uh, that were happening in town to see where the weak spots are. Okay. Maybe and basically just use that as like whatever he gets. It's information on uh, getting that portal to Melora. Okay. Um, do any of you speak to each other during these times? Uh. Yeah, I mean, he I talked mean, to I, some I, when he was in yeah. town. I, I, I would honestly. have let people know that I have some shards, but... Because the reason I'm suggesting is if, if Annie mentions that Verendel has been helping her to yeah. find that so, that information, then that could be something that could help you as well. No, oh, you're right. I better go kill Verendel. He knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, but yeah, I, w I would have mentioned that we had gone around trying to get shards and that I had okay. only come up with five shadow shards and one that looked like ours. Cool. Okay, there are five uh, that look kind of have a red hue to them. One of them looks like the ones that we already have. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Silas will tell them he's building a, uh, he's basically building a, a, a big 
house there for his extended family. He's not mentioning the temple. Um, Including his great-great-grandmother? Yeah. Yeah, all of his direct family being there. Um, Should that uh, be a deception roll? Or? <laughs> well, it, it's the great-great-grandmother. <laughs> There's only one. Uh, okay. And uh, he'll be uh, telling them basically that he's gotten a bunch of information on how to make a, the portals and he ha he thinks he has a formula for how to construct it. So, nice. um, and then, yeah, he's going, basically it's like, if we've got a little bit for the, we've kind of got mini Nexus crystals and we've got some information. He's basically going to try and figure out where would be a good spot to try to break through to Melora. Okay. So that we can be ready for that. And you're sharing that with Varendel too, are you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah, he's cool. Part of the group. It would be great to be able to tell Ardwin Cartwright that we have some hope of finding his daughter. He's he, he was very insistent that I try to do something in the beginning, but there was much that I couldn't. And now he's lost a lot of his spark. I'm assuming I would have gone to our to Arwen Cartwright at some point during the four weeks to talk to him about that. Okay, like give him an update, basically. Yeah, you... I mean he's he's lost a lot lost of the spark to go with his missing ear. It's true, and his jaunty hat now. <laughs> um, you would find Arwen to be pretty distraught. His office is a mess. Last time I think you were there, you saw his office was impeccable, and it looks as though there's a stack of paper he hasn't dealt with. He's got a very harried assistant. Um, it 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 even he even looks thinner than you remember him like he was a fairly um boisterous uh rotund businessman very successful but it looks like he hasn't eaten anything for a long time or at least is not eating well um and seeing and I you it's kind of a combination of hope and also desperation anger. yeah <laughs> a bit of anger as well because you were the, she she was with you for a long time and he was he was in favor of that but now not so much i would have I'd also done a few sendings to melora to a find out to make sure she's still alive and b love well, i'd reassure uh, ardwin of that you and just to make sure like you received no response from those shit even if i try each day or... yeah not a single response that ain't good and just to be clear, we did get a response once before. Yeah. In the very beginning, now. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but um, I'm not going to tell Ardwin that though. Okay. Uh, he is quite distraught, and you can spend you can spend time if you want to trying to make him feel better, or you can make it a simple visit. I can try to help him organize his office if he wants. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll finish Silas as we'll come back around to Medrick's last week here. Um, last week is just going to be construction. Okay. Uh, so Silas is hey. basically trying to trying to triangulate or trying to find a pattern in all of these these uh, spots. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he's basically just trying to I don't know check the flow of magic or the spots where they went. So, okay. That sort of thing. I, I will say for this research role, you will have advantage because, in fact, uh, as Verendel and Annie had worked together, they actually have a map of the town with as many of the portals as they had been able to figure out. So you have there. that to start from. Okay. It, it won't change the role, but he would bring Dudek in on this as well. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oops. Sorry, I forget. Um, I was going to spend one of the non-specific mediums on it, the last one I've got. Okay. Um, was that to make it a medium outcome, or was that to... Because the, the cost is uh, the outcome. Uh, yeah, I forgot to pay a cost. What, I mean, what kind of cost would be appropriate 
well, I suppose no. The out the outcomes are going to end up being knowledge. Um. Um. No, he just spend a small. Uh. I guess a small information, uh, one of the the non specific ones he's got. Okay. Um. For the chart and then he'd spend a medium to try to boost it okay so still looking at a small outcome then yeah okay uh so that would be a 16 which would be too small so yeah basically there's too small information about portals to melora Is there any way that one of those could be something else? Um, because they really aren't meant to stack in that way as much as they're different things you discover. Okay. Um. Hmm. Uh, maybe a small renown. Uh, so that could be the people know that you're looking into it yeah maybe something either something about how he's still trying to uh, do what he can to bring her back so he's trying to help or something like Silas Marsh portal seeker okay I don't know something like that Whichever of those you decide upon, uh, let me know so I can I can make sure the reactions are appropriate. And uh, that would be it. Okay. After that week, um... and he would communicate that to them. Whatever, like what the small piece of inf information he found was. So okay. maybe one of them looks particularly good or something. And again, let me know at the end what you have, and I can make sure that those information bits get a little more flesh. Yeah. Um, at the end of that week or after that search, um, Dudek realizes he needs to do more research. So he's going to be away for the following week. He's going back to his library, and he's going to network with some of his colleagues. Nice. So, okay, I remind him that, uh, as I remind the others, they've all got a small book, so we can write to each other. Uh, if needed. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to remember where he left his doorknob. Did he leave his doorknob with you guys? I, completely I don't think so. Okay. No, he's got it in his pocket as far as I know. Yeah. Because if he doesn't leave the doorknob, he can't get back. But he wants to make sure it's in some particular safe place. Uh, actually, he would ask uh, Medric if he can leave it at the temple. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay. So there will be a door that people should not open. Uh, and it will be... Put it in your room, Medric. Um, yeah. And it, as you recall, on, on the other side, he has defenses in his sanctum. So it would be dangerous for anyone to come through. So it's in my room and it says, broom closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone comes oh. looking for a broom, and boom! It's the boom <laughs> closet. And there's going to be, a, like, I'm, I'm going to put, like, a piece of fabric that has a symbol of Ignis on it over the closet. Because okay. that does not, so it's, it's, it's it, it does hidden, not look suspicious at all. It's now a hidden door. <laughs> <laughs> so if you draw um, plans, right in the hidden door. Yes. Before Dudek leaves, uh, Silas is going to ask if he could take a look at the compass of Argenti Sagax that get trapped in his machine. Because right now, us being able to to track portals with the compass would be really useful. Yeah. That is one of the things he's going to look at, is just try to figure out how to extract that. Um, he, uh, yeah. So that's going to be something he's working on as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, Back around to Annie's last week. Um, I'm going to do a bit more um, 
portal nexus stone hunting. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a medium resource. Okay. Varendel um, is working with Silas this week, so you won't yep. have him as a resource. Yep. Um, I'm going to use one of my to-be-determined resources, um, the one of the medium ones, to try to get a medium result. Okay. And basically going to be using the, the map that we already put in place to uh, to try to take another look to see if I can get more of the larger shards. All right, so that is the spend to get the result. Uh, uh, and it's the harvesting. Yes. Uh, now, are you going to invest anything to make it easier? Um... What do I have for resources? Did you say medium or large, by the way? Medium. Okay. For some reason, I I'm using one of my... I have it noted as to be determined. <laughs> okay. And if you can fill in what that detail is, then I'd love to know, but... Um... I don't particularly know. I think it's probably going to be just, like, the information that we gathered a few weeks ago okay. from talking to people. Put all of that together with the map and try to narrow down where the bigger portals were. Okay. Um, let's see here. So do you want to invest to make it a little easier? Um, I'll use a small resource. Okay. So basically, as a notice of, like, I've paid my way in to get certain places and... A little bit of extra money. Gotcha. A little bit of extra money to get easier access. All right. For a medium in outcome, you have a plus two on the roll. Um, investigation is an appropriate skill. I don't know if you have another one in mind. Um, can I do sleight of hand because it's the action of harvesting it? We've already figured out where the big, where they are. Yeah, I don't mind that. It's the idea that these things are five-dimensional and you have to do a little bit of... I can imagine that Annie in certain places knows there's a shard there, kind of has to close her eyes and gets that weird kind of torso twist, then arm up and then bend and then trying to get, like reaching in over an invisible fence, moving your hand through the the gash in the universe, if you will. Non-Euclidean gash in the universe. So, sleight of hand roll for a... 20 plus, plus two. two for the small resource. Okay. Uh, for, a, yeah. yep. for a medium outcome, that is two small and one medium. Mm -hmm. And you can take those. At, probably want the medium as a shard because that's the big thing we're looking for. Yep. Two small, you can take any which way you like. Um, you may have literally found someone's wallet wedged into the interdimensional space between two places. Or... Uh, you may pick up on some rumors of strange things about town. Um, I'm open okay. to different suggestions. Um, it's going to be a shadow shard. Okay. Um. <clears throat> uh, for the smalls, I'm going to use them as a I'd even say that contacts could work in this case. Yeah, that that's kind of what I was thinking was contacts. Okay. So again, let me know at the end and I will have appropriate people or if there's a particular characteristic of those of those contacts, let me know and I'll incorporate that into the into the uh, the build. Okay. I'll, I'll do one as contacts and one as a rumor. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds appropriate. Now, give me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. Ten. Ten. Um, where do you think you found that large shard? Can you describe the general area? Was it in a building, outside? Was it in a back room, in a warehouse, or a bar? Probably in a side alley. 
Okay. So as you move down this side alley, and you're, you're fairly certain that you know, and you can even see some of the destruction from the creatures that came through, um, still manifest in the buildings. A few buildings have been abandoned since then. Uh, you, as you recall, some of them, such as the one where your now mousling friend came through, or rattling friend, I should say, uh, that one was utterly abandoned at that point. Now that you know what to look for and you have this amulet which helps to give sort of almost a, a fifth sense, you can see that ever so slight shimmer. Um, it's, a, it's about halfway up the wall, about 15 feet up, so it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get in place. But you're able to. No one seems to notice that you're kind of hanging halfway off a wall with your arm sort of stuck into a spot that no one sees and disappearing up to the elbow. And as you're rooting and, around... And yeah, I can't, I can't climb up walls. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> as you're rooting around in there and you can kind of get a hold of it, um, there's a coldness that strikes you. As the hand with the ring goes through that space and in a way feels like it's a million miles away. And you pull and it feels like your arm is lengthening. And the color drains out of your arm. And you hear in your mind that same voice, closer now. But trying to whisper, there is tremulation in the voice, a, a, a tremor, a, a, a hesitation, but also a, a certainty. I'm with you. Don't worry. I'll make sure you come back. Just as he did for me. And you feel that strength flow through. Your arm continues to pull and seems thinner than it was before. Longer than it was before. Um, it would be at least six inches longer than the other arm if it was pulled out this way. But with a, a hand sense on your shoulder... Um, you feel that familiar presence, um, and then you... Is there a fucking soul in this ring? Pull on this uh, shard, and it comes out. And your hand still looks gray, and it is longer than your other arm. And it slowly starts to shift to be the same length. But as you kind of turn the hand over, you notice the skin has a different texture to it, the very fingertips all look like thicker skin, almost uh, the, the, the skin of calluses, of hard work. While well, you've done your own hard work, growing up as a noble, that was not the kind of skin you had because you always had the option of soaking it in oil and finding restoratives. And as you land back down on the ground, you have this crystal it is fifth dimensional, a larger one like this. As you turn it, you can almost not see it on its edge, but you can feel it. It's not like grabbing two sides of a thing. It's like grabbing three sides at the same time. Probably put it in your pack and stow it away. Good. Better. And the voice seems to drift back. What, if anything, is Annie's reaction to this? Annie is kind of freaked out. Has, has she been able... You said that the voice that's familiar. Has she been able to... Is there a role that I can make to see if I can place it? Sure. Let's make a history role with advantage. Twenty-three. 23. It, it takes you a little while um, because you kind of go through your inventory of, of everyone you heard from. Um, it doesn't sound like anybody you've met recently. At first you're thinking maybe one of the girls from the lighthouse. Um, but it doesn't have the same character. Their voices have different a different accent, a different lilt. Um, and then you remember... Back in the castle, one of the serpents. She was just a, a quiet mouse, but she had this 
inner strength to her most of the time. Somewhere in her line there had been um, uh, elven heritage, but it long since leached away, as they sometimes do over time. Um, she was shy, but hardworking. Um, and then we didn't see her again. You assume she was assigned to work somewhere else in the castle or maybe somewhere else in the city, but you never saw her again. And in that moment, there's just this weird flash as you realize that the last time you saw her, she was wearing a ring that looks exactly like the one you have on your hand right now. The one that was later given to you believe by your governess that would be correct the girl's name was Meredith and the governess's name was Helena the voice seems to recede and does not seem to be prominent again Medric, yep. you're pulling the the last position here, the flag for the evening. Mm -hmm. What is Medric's last week engaged with? And keeping in mind that now you have Tabia potentially to help you out with something. Yeah. Well, because you said the construction of the temple to upgrade it would take two weeks, so that's going to be like week three and week four. Um, yep. It will be this week as well if you want to continue and finish that. Yeah. Um, Tabia is not good for construction. <laughs> <laughs> so not going to be much does, help to you But there. does she have an eye for, for decoration, for, for interior decoration? Uh, that she does. That okay, she cool. Does. Uh, definitely has an eye for style. That's, this will be her job. So hopefully, like, a well-decorated temple will bring more followers. <laughs> okay. She makes some unorthodox choices in, in or suggestions in, in what she uh, decide, uh, what she suggests would be the best for this place. Um. Seat warmers. They're completely invisible, but they give you a sense of hearth and home. Okay, yeah. As long as you, as long as you set them to the right level, there's nothing worse than a hot seat for most people. But a warm seat is perfect. Yeah. Uh, it will drive costs up. Potentially. So basically, if you go, if you follow with her, I would suggest that you. There's no, no ongoing cost for this construction. But an investment of small would be appropriate. Okay, so a small like resource. That. Yeah. Down to two. Okay. And what if we had like the front row being hottest hottest seats, second row of pews would be like second hottest seats, and it would kind of kind of like be a gradient, based on how warm people want their butts to be. I mean, you'll certainly d you know discern the most faithful from the least faithful, and anyone who can stand the front seats, uh, well. Might be a good acolyte to hold on to. Yeah. And we are going places. <laughs> um, so yeah, she agrees with that too. And is a seat warmers, is it new, is it new technology? Uh, it's not a new technology, but it would be a, an innovation on existing technology. Essentially, you're investing a little magical essence of Ignis right into the the seats themselves. So it's a small magical blessing for those those and rows. And if we can make these portable, then we can sell them for donations to the temple. Or it's of their rent best them. interest to come to the temple to be warm. But what if we could rent them out and people would have to pay a monthly subscription? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but my home came Medric, with a seat the warmer. tycoon. <laughs> my home came with a so seat warmer. You're telling me I can't yeah. use it if I don't pay my license? <laughs> yes we could yeah let's leave them at the temple for now don't corrupt my world <laughs> your filthy capitalist ideals for the good of the, for the good of the realm <laughs> for an extra bonus you'll get sun plus in the morning um <laughs> yeah so seat warmers for the temple of ignis yeah you can either get light or heat or if you pay the full the full pro price 
Um, no. Get both at the same time. <laughs> okay, so uh, small investment um, gives you a plus two bonus on the roll, and her helping you out with the design gives you uh, advantage. Uh, it is more of a design type roll, however, so keep that in mind when you're picking the skill. Uh, skill will be. What is an appropriate? What is an appropriate skill for this? Uh, insight would actually make sense here if you're looking to basically right. aesthetically uh, welcome people in. If if I botch this, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to jinx it. <laughs> Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven total. is not a botch. Okay. <laughs> um, on a small outcome, that is six small outcomes. So, uh, and I would suggest that you spread these around a little bit. Uh, if you uh, that that seat warmer will be one cost of that small uh, the small. Well, actually, no, you made a small investment, so it's it's one of those small outcomes. Um, is the seat warmers. Uh, renown, you can have a renown that is, the temple is always a warm place for people. So when you're trying to convince people to come in, that might be an argument, if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, so I have to figure these out like right now, or after? Or that's yeah, you don't have to work them out right now, just make sure you, you have that on your list of things to do. I do, I do find that all of us... Um, stray from the game in between game <laughs> sessions so sometimes it's just better a bit. <laughs> to strike while the uh, seats are hot uh, but that does bring a conclusion to the downtime hopefully it's been fun i know it was a little awkward yeah. and, and uh i've got some some edges to to round off but the idea is this could potentially generate a few story points and be inter intermingled in with other things and um, it prevents us from spending six weeks on downtime yes yeah <laughs> see i've gotten better yeah, it, it works out a lot better this time compared to previous times. <laughs> um, and you all managed to achieve a bunch of things. There's now an extension of the temple. It has warm seats. There's now a number of shards that have been harvested, so you can start working on, on uh, building that portal. Um, there's now a, a temple on a hill um, in which to welcome the mother. And Merrick uh, has cool armor. Hill. Yep. There's a house on the hill. House on the Nobody hill. knows about the temple. Right, sorry. Renown. Definitely a not a house. Temple. <laughs> Perfectly normal house. Yeah, that's a, that's it. It's renown is definitely not a cultist. <laughs> <laughs> well, or or a nice cultist. It's hard to put that entirely back into the bottle. All right. Ooh, instead of a rumor, could I get a renown for my work in trying to help find Melora? Yeah, that works. Now, all of these resources, uh, or most of these resources, have uses in normal time as well. Some will offer bonuses to particular roles. Some are um, just, you have the resource, therefore you don't have to worry about it. For example, if you have a small money, then you can just get small things. Essentially, you're paying for it, and it's not used up. Um, it's really only used up during downtime because you're intensely investing it in something. Uh, Renown probably has the most direct usage, um, but there are things like lingering, lingering injuries and curses and things like that, which can be solved easier through downtime sometimes as well. They don't necessarily cost hundreds of, of uh, gold and diamonds, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, are there any I'm other... I'm glad to have my strength back. That's true. That's true. Um, it just means I can take these things away more. I can uh, no. cause more curses and things. <laughs> Uh, are there any other questions or comments or last minute changes? Um, I would ask in the next, uh, you know, just maybe after the game is done tonight, just write me up a quick email with those, those details, quick email or our group chat, um, just so that I have them on hand and we've got that dealt with super quick. My web, my resources, Google doc is updated. Awesome. Um, now. To give some sense of trajectory where we're going next, do you have something particular in mind that you want to tackle next? Uh, rescuing Melora. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's top of top priority. Okay. And uh, considering she's not responding, it would be wise to bring a, a diamond worth five hundred GP just in case I need to res. 
Uh, and if we can toss Gosh in a portal somewhere along the way, we'll go for that. <laughs> no, he's fine. Gosh, like many of the NPCs you've brought to this town, uh, you don't run into him very much after you initially run in. Uh, he needs to go home. <laughs> maybe he is. Um, but, uh, okay, so rescuing Melora is next top priority. I'll make sure everything is appropriate for that. You have information. You have uh, uh, the raw materials you, you need to potentially construct what you need to do. Uh, and uh, you can prepare yourselves. And you have some allies, even people who can take care of your homes while you're away. Where, and where is Gosh staying anyway? The three bells? Um, once you got there, Annie was, was uh, intent on, on getting Gosh some reasonable clothes. And after that, um, unless you are specifically seeking him out, he's exploring the town. And has his own agenda. I have told him to not get into trouble. Ooh, they, they, this, could be, this could cause shenanigans. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if I find out you were arrested, you will stay in jail. I will make yeah. sure of it. <laughs> does Vir does Virendel know about him? <laughs> I, I, Gosh would have been mentioned, yes. Okay. I, so. Like I said, the only thing that, that I avoided is the name of the... the whatchamacallit. So, so Argenti keep, Sagex? Argenti Sagex. Uh, keep an eye so. out for this rugged, this rather handsome, one-eyed... The seven-foot, one-eyed man. Yeah. 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 Um, who knows what Gosh has been up to Gosh by gosh, the mute <laughs> gosh as well, because he can't, he doesn't really speak all that well. Yep. Okay, well, I will, I will potentially let loose what gosh has uh, been up to over the last uh, four weeks, but uh, next week, or next, sorry, two weeks from now, we'll meet once again uh, with the quest to save Melora as it begins. Thank you very much to my players for uh, putting up with my my uh, downtime system and uh, helping me run through it. It is much improved. Thank you. I am very happy to hear that. Uh, and uh, very much thanks to anyone who might be watching, either watching live on streaming Twitch. We meet every couple of Sundays, every other Sunday, I should, should say. Uh, Three o'clock Atlantic time, approximately. Uh, and on twitch.tv slash ENCIF1. And if you're just catching the end of this or you're curious, hey, where do I find out more? Um, you can go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1 for the full set of episodes. We've only missed, I think, two or three that didn't record at one point. Uh, and also go to Facebook. Look for Watchers of the Drowned Isles, where Pat has been very diligently putting up summaries of the episodes. So you can catch up there and find out what happened then and find out what happens next as well. Uh, once again, thanks to my players. Thanks to all you watching. And we'll be also, back Also, fun fact for, for, for the session. Hmm. We have finished book two. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> 73 I need to sessions. now find a, no, a no boot, new notebook. So 73 sessions total. Now we can, we've covered two books. So about 36 session, sessions of book is what we're saying at this point. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, so long. And thanks for all the fish, I guess. <laughs>